All right, so let's open up the item adoption of the agenda to discuss the petition matter immediately instead of discussing it at the Committee of the Whole meeting. We need someone to move and second uh, this motion. Councillor Grimaud, you move that we adopt the amendment. Seconded by Councillor Joignard. All those in favor? Thank you. So, Mr. Gadois. Yes, my name is Richard Gadois, and I represent the Chemin Brazo residents. Where there are 51 residences, one of the major roads in Clarence, 103 adults, 10 children, 123 children, or should I say automobiles, uh, driving along that road on a regular basis. Uh, we are regularly complaining about the state of the road. If we were to get the same treatment that Baseline Road did get, this would be quite acceptable. You know that traveling along uh, country roads uh, is uh, not a uh, very sanitary uh, practice. There are always dusts, dust uh, in the air. There are uh, many residents, and we figure that we pay over and above $500,000 worth of municipal taxes. So I believe that you have the same hill on Barazo on the other side. Please, ma'am, please don't, don't. Hey, hey, hold on now, please. Let's not uh, come up with any comments. We don't have uh, time for this. Uh, I've always stated that it was always a costly proposition to repair this because we had problems each and every time we had rainfall. We've performed a lot of work on roads. This year, however, the budgets have been drawn up, the contracts have been handed down, and let me tell you, we were called upon to prolong some uh, uh, previous contracts because asphalt prices have risen by some 30% this year, and we've been hard hit by price increases oil and uh, uh, on Bouvier treatment, for example, we were supposed to put down two coats of asphalt. This is what we've done on asphalt. Things work very well. This practice was acceptable. I, that's what I'd like to see with time. If we come back next year, we'll revisit that issue. Um, we can't take any decisions at present, sir, because we're waiting for a new council to be elected. Hopefully, all of this, all of the members of this current council will be reelected. Well, we hope that uh, uh, we hope that well, we hope that uh, a definite decision will be taken so that it can be considered at the next budget. Well, it's very expensive though to maintain this stretch of roadway. Of course, it stands to reason that when you're lay down gravel uh, if you're if you're performing grading work of course uh, it does cost a lot well I've pushed for years to have baseline uh, worked upon uh, now of course uh, uh, there's a lot of work to be done there and I'm totally in agreement with you that work has to be done there along the hill Councillor Joignard, Brazo is in between two streets that have been paved, paved in between Juguet and Baseline. So, you know, it would be nice to have trucks there that are already in the vicinity. And even if I take this example during the summertime or the wintertime, should I say, the salt trucks uh, uh, are easily channeled from one area to another. And w we are, there are many residents that are along that stretch of roadway. And of course, that's why we draw this to your attention tonight. Well, I'm totally in agreement with you here tonight, but we're going to have to wait up on the 2019 budget. We'll push this item, of course, and if Mr. André Lalonde wishes to be uh, to lend us uh, uh, an ear tonight, as or to you an ear as to your claim, and that used to be the ward I used to live in at that time. I know exactly what the situation is, and we'll push that along next time around. It all depends on municipal elections, uh, of course. This is within our priorities, as uh, I'm talking about the current uh, uh, elected representatives right now. So, of course, uh, all we need to do is to perform work in this area. Well, of course, we'll persevere with this. If we don't have any results, we'll come back to you. Well, 
now we'll, you know, I believe at the beginning of December the new council will be elected, and as of the beginning of December we'll jump into that budget. So it could be a Christmas gift, Mr. Mayor. Well, yes, it could be. Well, Mr. Rochon has a nice white beard, and you can stick stick a white cap on his head, and he can be Santa Claus. Well, at the beginning of uh, December, uh, this would be a thing to be uh, considered. Well, of course. Is there not a system that we it could be implemented to train the individual that operates the greater? You know, instead of laying down, you know, gravel along those ditches that surround that area, could we not have something implemented until 2018 that ensures a better maintenance of this area? Mr. Leonard, I'll have you answer this. Well, Mr. Mayor, of course, we'll take a look at the extent of the operations, but we can take a look at the ongoing operations in that vicinity. It's a bit difficult for us to maintain uh, those roads laying down gravel because uh, gravel stays embedded. And uh, of course, when, especially during the winter time, we have to plow back snow even further. So snow winds up accumulated in the ditches. The state of roadways is even worse when uh, there is snow that accumulates. Well, if you push stone on the side and push it onto the ditches, it actually uh, makes the situation even worse. We've made a request for a new culvert, and the existing culverts are backing up because of the gravel there, or the accumulation of gravel. We don't have enough money, I understand, to pave roadways, but we have to make use of logic to implement a system so that the situation doesn't worsen. And, you know, we're not. Uh, can I have your name and your address, ma'am, just for the purposes of. Well, my name is Joanne Chopendick. I live at. 1102 Brazo. I see. No. Mr. Godwin, are you finished with your, present, with your presentation? No. Definitely we'll be back in December to address the new council. Uh, 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 Ma'am, uh, you'll have to stand up and give us your name and your address. I live in 1148 Brazo Street. I'm directly living in the or on the hill in the morning when I go off to work. I drive and oncoming traffic, school buses cross me. We rocks or gravel is piled up on our property and water deviates onto our property. And the wall that we paid $6,000 is now brought down because of previous work. And we're, our entrance way is, is now, has now uh, uh, cresting up and down like this. One at a time, please. One at a time. Your name and your address. Pierre Para, 1140 Brazo Road. Carl came over to our place along with the supervisor, and they told us that they could not work on these ditches prior to August. But as I stated to them, this is an emergency situation. The water does not go into the ditches because the, uh, uh, the road is lower than the rest of the surrounding land. So each and every time the grader goes down the hill, it brings down the gravel, but plows down the road. I'm paying someone right now uh, to take care of our property because we can't even cut the grass properly anymore. I was asked to shore up the retention wall, and my I was told to shore up the re retention wall at a ratio of three to one height-wise, and I was told that I could be granted a permit to even shore up my wall up to nine, to a height of nine foot. Look, at this point in time, I can't even get into my home on on bicycle. That doesn't even make sense. Mr. Leonard will look at, into the situation and will give you a result of his expertise. Well, I was told last time around, I was laughed at last time around and they told me about this hydrant on my on my yard which is 
some things that I put in there. It's, it's like a, a personal item, basically. And I can't even enter into my my entranceway. And the amount of taxes I'm paying is ridiculous. I want to obtain the services I pay for. Well, we'll look into this, Mr. Pena. Just leave your phone number to uh, the person that's supervising road work, and he'll contact you back. Yes? I know that the next town council will have to look into certain matters next time around to ensure that the department performs a proper analysis of Brazo Road as long as it needs so that we can address this as of 2019. If we're encountering danger problems, of course, there are certainly cer some steps that we can implement to ensure that the department can on a medium and long term or short and medium term basis can alleviate the situation. Well, what happens also with uh, this situation is that during the first snowfalls, the plows will uh, leave snow completely onto the gravel surface. So really, the snowplow operator will have, would have to raise the grade of his snowplow. That's the time in which I receive the most phone calls from citizens that are malcontent or because they tell me that they've received or removed more gravel than they've removed snow. So, Mr. Caravelli, come before town council in at the beginning of December because contracts have now been given out. And as of December, now will be the time to mention this. I thank you for appearing before council tonight, by the way. Please stand. Yes, 1405 Brazo Road, Mr. Mayor. When the grader goes by and puts in uh, and plows gravel into the ditch, there's no the, the operator doesn't know what what to do or doesn't do his job properly, and he should do like other grader operators and round out the surface. And the milk truck operator, because I'm operating a dairy farm, told me, uh, well, they uh, told me that uh, my road is not graded properly. And I pay my taxes, of course. You must have heard about my situation. Yes, I heard about your situation, sir. Now, when I figure that when he goes along with his grader and plows down the road, he plows the gravel on either side of the road. And now, if you were to round off the surface of the said roadway, things would be much easier. And when there's rainfall, rain would not accumulate in ditches on either side, especially when he, the snowplow operator plows the snow and plows the snow and piles it up so high that there's more snow than, or more gravel than snow that accumulates in ditches finally. Well, take a look into this situation, will you, uh, Mr. Leonard? We will. Uh, please give your name. You've stated your address. What's your first name? Gilles. Gilles Huppé. F and family name is Huppé, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Well, thank you. Any other questions, other comments that you like to bring to Council's attention? Well, thank you for having attended here tonight, one and all, and we'll look into this and take care of the matter. Thank you. Let's go on now to the next item on the agenda. All right now. Go for it, ma'am. I was fairly nervous when I saw all of these people in attendance. I figured it would be best if they had their say. Now it's my turn. I'm going to talk to you about the little free libraries that we're going to build. Um, as you know, we close, we're closing the branches in Clarence Creek and in St. Pascal. Next week is the last week for them. And um, we spoke with the schools and they are going to keep some of the books some of the books we're going to take with us a lot of the books are outdated which is a shame because they're all brand new it seems to me um, but can't keep history books from 1994 so but what we're going to do is we're going to save some of our really nice books and we get some really nice donations and in the meantime before we get our bookmobiles up and running we are actually going to have these little boxes that are going to be in public locations um, I sent you pictures of them. They look like little houses, and people can just go there, grab a book, put one back if they'd like. 
Um, they're very popular. I know in Castleman, they've already put in 14, mostly at parks. Now, what we're going to do is put it near the baseball diamond in Saint Pascal. No, why no? It's very close to the ice rink. Put it closer to the school. Mm. You have a old age home next door. Yeah. yeah, right next to the. Oh, yes. It's right next to the home. Yes. Well, I would suggest to go more on the other side, closer to the school, so you don't get any damage done to your. I'm actually not worried about damage to it. They've done a lot of. Um, sorry, there's been a lot of research on it, and very few people actually damage the boxes because of what they represent. More people steal the books, and that's okay because they're free. Um, the reason I ch I'll tell you why I chose that spot. The reason I chose that spot is because you've got families that go play hockey. You've got the little brothers and sisters, they're watching. Let's go get a book. You've got people that come in to play baseball, families again. Let's go grab a book. Now, I don't, is there a bus stop in St. Pascal at all? Yeah, at the school only. At the school only. Yeah, but see, that's just the students that already were not borrowing the bus. No, the public, the bus system stopped at the uh, Ronald Alonde Community Center. Okay. which is right outside the village. Okay, because I'm trying to hit it's a spot. Just that the, if you put it close to that residence, there is there are people in there that they're sort of hoarders, and they'll come and take your books and for no, no reason at all. They won't do anything with them. Okay. I'm thinking it'd be more use if it was a little closer to the school. Okay, well, the principal did recommend, he said, well, he said that he'd have no problem if we put it on the school property. I just thought that it would be better to put it in a spot where the public go to play. But Maybe it's only a few feet over. It's only a few feet over, so I mean, no problem there. There's a mayor diamond there, and I'm telling you, uh, I'm, I support the mayor completely on that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll move it then. Okay. Closer to the school. Is that good? Yep. <laughs> um, and then in Clarence Creek, obviously on this road is the best spot for it. Um, we've got people coming from the home. We've got people at the arena. The bus stop, which I'm kind of excited about. Even going to the Dipanar. So if we put it just on the other side of the street over here, I think that would be prime location for it. What do you think? Well, I mean, we can try it and then see if... They are, they are movable. It's just yeah, a exactly. piece, it's just a wood block basically put into the ground two feet deep. Okay. So it's not cement or anything like that. So we can easily, if we say, mm, that's not working, let's try somewhere else, we can move it. Okay. Yeah. No, I've got that. I don't even need my paperwork. <laughs> They've got it all on their screens. <laughs> now, I looked in the States because there is an organization, a nonprofit organization that does this, um, but they were very expensive. They were $450 US, plus you add on the shipping, all that, the exchange, and I'm sure there would have been some sort of duty in the time frame. So instead, I got a quote in town here locally, and that's $425 each. So that's much better. It's going to save us a couple of hundred dollars, and that can be in within a month. So. I just want to tell that's you all about your, it. That's in your budget? I'm going to put it in the budget. I'm going to make it fit somewhere. Very good. Yeah, I'm going to make it fit. No, no, I'm not trying to ask for money there, but I do <laughs> recommend, possibly, we might eventually want to put them in at some of the other parks in the villages. Cheney doesn't have a library or anything. Perhaps it would be nice. I know the soccer is very busy there and stuff like that. So perhaps, at some point, we might want to expand them and put them in more places. And we're not just going to have it community run. We're actually, my staff and myself, we're going to go in and check the books. And then we can also use the sides of it to advertise different events at the library as well. So it's a nice spot. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. It said that we all have everything, by the way, we don't have any. You don't have anything? No. So when you say we've already seen it. It's in the Well, I have the committee of the whole meeting. Minutes here. It's in the next meeting, that's why they don't have it in this meeting. Oh, All right, we'll go to the next meeting. We had to make an exception for you, remember? <laughs> Thank you. So it's, it's like 27 inches high. It's, it's going big and 24 wide. So it's a nice big box with a little open door and everything. So it's... Yeah, yeah. They, with, they withhold the... They withstand weather. Yeah. Yeah, Ottawa has them. Uh, Castleman has 14, which they put in their parks and stuff. 14, you and they the did, whole village. Yeah, I, I was kind of surprised when I saw 14, but... Uh, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I just wanted to let
let you guys know about it, and maybe it's something you want to consider. I'll keep you updated on how it's going. Maybe eventually you guys are going to say, hey, can you put one here as well? We'll put another one over here. Okay. Just make sure you coordinate with uh, uh, the department with the arena here. Yeah. Just yeah. to make sure it's not in the yeah. accessibility issues or whatever. So. No, I'm going to go through all the right channels. Okay. okay. Yeah. And um, what we're going to do is uh, we'll also do a sort of launch of the boxes too and let everybody know about them. Okay. It's all good. Uh, the next two. subject. Yes. Next, number two, collaboratoire. Uh, we didn't actually send it in English, but I will be sending it to Marie and Monique tomorrow in English because we did translate it today, but well, didn't get it. While we're talking about English and French, can, can you get the minutes, your minutes done by yeah. Angle? Yeah. I, I, I let Helen know that they will be by okay. from now on. Well, I saw today, I noticed the minutes were all in English. Yeah. Um, it depends, it seems to depend on who's writing up the minutes. They used to be in French, then they went to English, then they went to French, then they went to English, but at no point were they ever really bilingual. <laughs> so okay. we're going to make them bilingual. Thank you. We're working on that now. Okay, okay so uh, the next situation, we're not asking for money, we're asking for a loan, which we are not adding to our, our no, annual pressure. Don't make pressures. nice size to me, make nice size to the young man way at the other end of the table here, mm -hmm. called Frédéric Desnoyers. He's the one that handles all the cash. The old guy next door, you don't have to. The, the piggy bank? <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to preface it with that before I explain what the project is. <laughs> So this project is um, the lab. We all know about the lab at the, li at the Rockland branch. Right now, right now, the lab is rented by the school, Ecole Secondaire Catholique. And what they do is they, they use it up until 3.30 every day. They don't use it all the time. Sometimes we use it as well when they're not there. But then in the evening, it rests empty pretty much most of the time. Now the school has noted that it the format is not suiting them anymore. First of all, they've got desktop computers that are out of date. They've got all the, the countertops, which are actually gone now. <laughs> Thank you to your team. <laughs> um, so in coordination with the school, we're gutting the area, and we're going to build something that will actually work for us as well as for the school. They're going to be using Chromebooks. We're going to have better seating in there, better lighting. We're going to put in a projector so we can actually do family movies. We do family movies in there every Saturday, but it's on a little TV, and um, we have to roll stuff in every time. No sound system, no blinds, so sometimes on the sunny days it's hard to watch the movies. So it's all included in that. So what we're asking for is the funds to just be able to get it done before September, because we are also going to use this room very specifically also for teens. I have a question, I believe. We have a little space in the corner. I'm sure some of you have seen it. Um, it's got a cool little couch, and we've got a PS4 there, but it's loud. The kids get loud, they get excited, they're playing video games, and sometimes we get a group of like 14, 15 of them in this little square. Um, so we all know we need somewhere for the teens to go. school supply money we are currently in negotiations to find out how much they will supply. So whatever, so whatever they do supply would go towards the loan. Um, we just had our event, the Once Upon a Time event. All of the money we raised on that is going towards the loan. And in following years, we are going to do the same thing. We're going to do the fundraisers, and then it will go towards the loan, which is why it won't add on to the pressures. And who did, did I discuss it with you that it will be five years? Five years we expect to have it all done. I just like to know how we can help with this. Actually, I'm going to ask Robin to come up because Robin's been directly dealing with the school. If you don't mind, and you can talk about what the school had to discuss. This is Robin Bavay. She's the adult services coordinator at the library. The title. Oh, sorry. Um, so uh, we have been discussing with the uh, the principal Chantal. Um, we've gone over the room and the needs of the school and our needs. Uh, with pro as programmers, we're two programmers at the library. So we've identified that, yes, this, this space is not adequate. It's not being used because it's not meeting the needs of either parties, really. Uh, they, um, Madame Chantal has approached the, um, the Conseil, and uh, she's waiting for response. What we see as a fair 
arrangement is that what is fixed in the room would be covered by the library, and what is mobile, the school is going to try to get funding for that. So tables, uh, chairs, um, couches, and stuff like that. We've researched this a lot because um, it, like I started about two years ago, and since then, noticed the room was not being used. We have a need in the community for something for the students, for the uh, teenagers, um, and it's a safe place. We see it as a win-win as well, good for the school, but for the city, um, uh, I know we lack space. It's a space that's not being used, that we can utilize. Uh, there's no added cost, really, other than this initial uh, renovation, um, because there's already staff, it's already an insur uh, there's already insurance uh, for the insurance on the property. So it's really, um, it's really this initial cost, and I think it will be beneficial. We see the kids outside our window all the time after school, hanging around, and if they had somewhere where they could come and we could actually um, provide them a service that they'll use, I think it would be very beneficial. I, uh, I'm completely in support of this. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to do is actually just uh, mandate the library to discuss with Mr. Dinwayi some kind of arrangement to see what is feasible and what is not, and then come back to us at, uh, at another time. I don't think we'd be able to today say yes to alone. I don't know if you've got that. That's actually we're hoping the, the reason we're today. looking for September we have to do we've tonight. we've um, they want to go ahead and yeah we've met up with okay. many uh, sorry, companies. I, okay. Sorry, I just want to ask if from the finance if this is possible. We'd have to determine the percentage of what has been done. And Catherine has proposed a length of five years. Will we charging ourselves interest? That's a bit the situation. Yes, we charge uh, this back to ourselves. There would be income generated by other establishments. 20% would not be all that much. Well, I'd like zero, really. If this is what the council wishes, well, that's fine. By giving out funds like this, we'd be losing uh, income. We'd be losing interest income on our bank account, which is about 2%. We'd be talking about some $30,000. That would be our recommendation, 2%. But you have the opportunity to do this. Uh, Tethlin proposed to do to reimburse with fundraising uh, to reimburse this loan. There would not be necessarily a budgetary impact on this. It's not fair if you don't charge interest, uh, since we were making interest already on this amount of money uh, for the residents. Uh, Whatever council on the side. Okay. I just I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think 2% is, is, is viable, you know, and it's, it's fine. I think it's, it's a big deal. It's a Do we have an idea as to how many hours are involved? You're telling us that uh, the school uses it? Well, at this time, well, of course, not all that much. They don't make use of it until 8.30. Well, let's say until, yes. Uh, I have access to the school's calendar, of course, and it's uh, a funny situation because at the beginning of the year when they visit, uh, maybe for about two weeks, youngsters will make use of the facilities. Same rule applies for the f coming weeks for the 
Well, I have access uh, each and every day. I remember uh, uh, that we were told that the lever was used each and every day. But as the years go by, it is made use of less and less. So uh, before you know, imposing another use to it, well, a couple of rooms that are set up to be more comfortable for students. They have like the lounging chairs, the bean bags, stuff like that. Actually, Madame Chouinard knows from the schools. So they have different setups like that. And that's kind of what the school likes about this idea is that it gives kids a chance they can sit on the, the stool. We're going to have like a little laptop bar next to the windows. They can sit on the high stools, they can sit on the couch, the folding chairs, the chairs on the side. A lot of options. I have no problems. I know that you have the children's well-being at heart, and Mrs. Tremblay spends a lot of time, be it with the Optimists and other clubs and, or with other children. I think we have to go forward with something like this alone if we can obtain one. Why not? And I believe that, yes, of course, uh, uh, there's not much time left. If we have to decide something tonight, options are on the table laid before us. It's a fairly simple matter. campus where I, I work, These, this equipment is used by students there. Each building that we designed has specific areas set aside for this particular purpose, so I have no problem with this, uh, Mr. Mayor. So moved and seconded, uh, moved by Councillor Chouinard, seconded by Councillor André. Moved, well, that we contract a loan at a rate of 2% uh, based upon a $42,000 amount for a five year period at an interest rate pegged at 2%. Reimbursement would be insured by the school board and uh, fundraising activities. A five year loan, then? Yes, yes. Uh, when you're stating contracting alone, do we not have reserves set aside for this? We'll look into that, yes. All those in favor, carried? Yes, one. I might have another question. Fine. Uh, well, I believe it might 
create some other budgetary pressures in other areas. Well, that's, we'll look into that. Question period. If you have any questions for town council, please step forward, give us your name and your address, and go ahead. Good morning. My name is Gilles Presso, 3395 Cercle des Côtes in Rockland. Good morning, or good evening, should I say, Mr. Mayor and council members. Now, on the 31st of January, 2018, there was a water main break, and the Ontario Water Resources Commission representatives showed up to close down water supply, and they condemned the hydrant located in between myself and my neighbor. On the 1st of the February, I had occasion to meet with Denis Lompré, who assessed the damages, and he stated that nothing can be done prior to the spring thaw. Now, on the same day, I wrote him a letter regarding our discussion. Now, on the 8th of February, he answered my letter, and he stated that he discussed the extent of damages caused by the water breakage will be addressed by the city of Rockland. Now, on the 21st of February, there was a second water main breakage. There was a hole in the asphalt 18 inches deep, and I contacted again Mr. Lompre. They sent some workers over, and they repaired the situation temporarily. On the 12th of March, I had occasion to meet or contact the city of Clemson Rockland, as well as the Ontario Water Resources Commission, and they came back again to take a look at the situation. They tried to close the valve again, and it broke. Once again, I incurred water damage on my property and my entranceway, and they dug that area for a third time in a short span of time. You have pictures of work that was made. Yes, we have a good description here of the photos. On the 2nd of April, I wrote a letter to Jean-Marc Lalonde to explain the situation. He answered back that he'll consult town hall on this. On the 10th of April, I phoned Mr. Philippe Corbier. He assessed the damages, and he stated that he did care of them. On the 23rd of April, I phoned Mr. Jean-Marc Lalonde again and told him that I had no news, and he said, well, I'll consult town hall again. On the 15th of May, I phoned Mr. Cormier, and he told me that this situation be corrected in between mid-June and mid-July. This situation has persisted for the past four and a half months, and I've been waiting for things to be corrected on the 22nd. Oh, on the, on the, last month, I contacted town hall. I contacted Mr. Lalonde again. He contacted the intern folks from the town hall to, from town hall on the 13th of june i consulted with julien Lenard at his office he, i explained to him my dilemma he told me what steps to follow uh, and uh, my patience has been exhausted after four and a half months i do have questions here, mr mayor i would like to know when corrective works will be done, and I'd like to obtain an answer as to my answer, and I'd like to be warned in advance when landscaping companies will come over to take a look at the situation and come up with a price to correct the said situation, because I will be making them aware as to where the water uh, leaked. It seeped or leaked close to 10 feet uh, from my garage door, the water actually uh, flowed past the lamp post that is erected there or close by. Fine. So I'd like to obtain an answer, Mr. Mary, if I'm as to whether or not I can address the situation with the workers when they'll show up there and take care of the such situation. Councillor Lalonde? Well, I'm going to wait upon Mr. Leonard's recommendation, but I can tell you that I was really, really disappointed by the service that we received. 
since the work has not been done since January. And last Saturday, I came back to the pictures. There were pylons around there that were still there. There are two depressions in the roadway. There's a hole right beside the manhole that was never repaired. Now, spring thaw has come and gone, unless they're waiting for next year's spring thaw. In any event, Mr. Mayor, I'm far from being satisfied from the steps undertaken. I've uh, had occasion to meet with Mr. Reynard on many occasions, and I met with Mr. Lonte prior to this, and the new individual that replaced Mr. Lontin, and nothing's been going on, and I'm wondering what's going on here. Now, this situation has been ongoing for the past five months in a residential area. I know that we like to put up cones here, there, and everywhere throughout Rockland, but it's high time that we pick them up. We're getting even worse than Montreal right now. <laughs> Mr. Lard, do you have any answer to this situation? Mr. Mayor, the only thing I can answer is this. Uh, given what's been happening, uh, I was told that we were uh, uh, folks were waiting until spring thaw had come and gone. This is an area in which uh, there were a lot of problems, and even if spring thaw has come and gone, the ground uh, is saturated still. We have to also repair, bear in mind, Mr. Mayor, the pipe there. It is very late in the season. When uh, it is now very late in the season, we're waiting for the contractors to show up. But when will we repair the water main? What well, Mr. Cormier stated, we thought we'd do this mid-June, maybe next week. So we'll be able to fix the landscaping also with you. Everybody's seen the pictures, of course, because of all of the damages that did occur. We'll have to repair the area. Well, last week I attended this property. I asked you to attend the property. You didn't have time to show up, and you told me that I you'd send Mr. Yves Rousset over, over, but he never showed up. Not only this gentleman's impacted, but his neighbor's impacted, because uh, the water pressure raised the level of the surrounding ground here, and I figure that five months is quite a long time to repair the breakage. Well, we addressed health and safety concerns also in that area. We figured we'd send Mr. Roussel over, but he did not take care of the works. He was looking at the health and safety aspects. He sent over Bernard to look at this specific situation, and he performed an ins uh, inspection uh, and figured that it was not a dangerous situation as situations go. Well, we figured we'd work would start next week. Yes, I'd have to consult Philip to determine the exact date. Councillor Zant, what bothers me or concerns me, Mr. Lennart, with regards to this situation is that it seems that our priorities, well, I have a great deal of difficulty in understanding the system, the priority system that was set up. Uh, this is not a concern directed towards you, but towards folks in your department. How many times does the situation does have to complain before he receives an answer from the city of Clarence and Rockland to state, well, you know, the situation will be corrected within such and such a time frame? You know, every time that Councillor Lalonde or myself has to revisit the initial complaint on many occasions before it is before situations are corrected. We need to follow up on situations not four months later, but as situations come up, it would have taken two minutes for someone to pick up the phone and phone this gentleman and say, well, listen, we haven't forgotten your situation. We haven't forgotten you. We are waiting upon B, A, B, and C to be done, and then we'll give you a call back. There's not, there, there are no follow-ups. I'm not saying that because you're involved in this, but the onus is a, uh, not upon a situation to, uh, uh, not uh, the onus is not upon taxpayers to request that updates be given to him or her. The onus is upon town administration to do this. I'd like to ensure that a plan be implemented to take care of this gentleman's situation and all other situations of our ratepayers that wind up in such a dilemma. I know that the infrastructure department is the subject of complaints similar to this one here, 
but we really have to, especially in this case, you know, there were problems encountered with the street, with the water main or the piping. Someone has to take charge of this particular of a particular situation and coordinates properly with the department that is concerned with s similar situations or certain situations. Depart certain departments are concerned with certain situations because it's, it's sort of like a pass the buck situation type thing that prevails. You know, well, who's in charge of this particular project, by the way? Well, as things stand right now, Mr. Cormier is in charge. Mr. Cormier. We've encountered problem for uh, problems with for quite a while. Mr. Kehoe had raised this situation or this dilemma with me. Each and every time that we receive a complaint by a ratepayer, that we should implement a filing system such as emergency services have, so that the complaint is documented. It removes pressure from Mr. Lennart's and Mr. Cormier's shoulders. If an individual has a call to make, he makes this call to his elected representative and the situation is resolved. If we implement a system where a complaint is numbered and documented and taken care of, then everything would be just fine. We'd have a resource person that would manage matters. What happens also is that you spoke to Mr. Lompre. Mr. Lompre, Mr. Lompre is now off on sick leave. Mr. Cormier has taken, has taken over from him. All of Mr. Lompre's matters would have been assigned to another individual if we'd had a proper filing system in place and we're passing the buck along to uh, let me direct my question. Uh, Mr. Kehoe, is there something that's going to be implemented with regards to dealing with complaints? We have a system in place right now. It's, uh, it's being used by certain departments. Uh, it's not being used by certain departments. And I'm sure uh, Mr. Lenhardt's staff are using it. We are also reviewing a, uh, another system for other purposes other than taking calls. So that's a SharePoint system that we talked at budget, which will be a very uh, evasive, uh, powerful system, but uh, we are looking at our existing call system, and again, Mr. Leonard, the software is WorkTech, that we do have right now that is being used, and whether it's, whether it's being used to its, uh, uh, to its potential, uh, and whether SharePoint can take over some of the functionality, we are reviewing this. So was a file created for this gentleman, situation? Uh, I believe so. I had it, it, it might be worth our while, Mr. Cormier, to go ahead with this and to implement this particular system we're talking about so that we can, you know, uh, uh, tackle those situations as they come up and they're reported to us by our ratepayers. There's another matter that has not been taken care of in Clarence Creek. Well, Mr. Mayor, in this particular case, let's have Mr. Leonard answer this. Notwithstanding, we should have a file open. We all have accesses, ac electronic access to a central filing system. And if, Mr. Leonard, you have a communication with this gentleman, you just input the data. If someone else wants to figure out what's going on with this particular matter, he can uh, tap into this electronic file and knows what's being done. You'd have dates and um, you know actions that were taken to correct this situation. You would have one individual responsible for a particular matter. Everything would be documented. Each and every time we do something, whatever that action is, everything would be documented. Everything would be uh, there. It would be easier to follow up with what needs to be done. It's easier to share documents amongst Google users, for example. Well, we assume that Mr. Lennart's department makes use of a system. Mr. Lennart, do you make use of a system? If yes, why did this break down? I just want to know. Well, we have a work order system, basically. It's a system that's uh, been implemented to deal with work orders. I don't think what Councillor Grimaud is suggesting uh, 
would res so would uh, satisfy him, given the situation we have right now, or given the uh, uh, the system we have in place right now. But we we're not dealing with work orders here, but with procedures that need to be reviewed in given situations. So we have to deal with those quickly and aggressively. From a communication standpoint, of course, uh, what you're, uh, you know, it would be worthwhile to implement such a system. Of course, we should contact ratepayers to give them um, a heads up as to what's happening. It's on a two every two weeks. Uh, do you, I still have two questions left, Mr. Mayor. Which guarantees shall I have within a year if similar defects reappear again? Well, we'll have to start up this this. These steps again. Well, do, are you expecting me to make use of a lawyer services? I think it would save time uh, to everyone. If Mr. Look, I think everybody would uh, would save if we were to proceed without making use of a lawyer. Without just call me up at the office each and every morning. We'll take care of this situation certainly. If you take a look at the photograph that was uh, taken here, they spread down a truckload of dust on interlock which broke in turn which broke up and if interlock is this does broke up this does break up then it gives rise to very difficult situations well look were you told that they dump all of this dust on the interlock there yes I was okay with this yes they did so and I told this individual that if you told me that uh, uh, this dust will not break up anything, that's fine with me, but it did break up something. Another thing also, there's a lady on our street about, well, let's say three weeks ago, there's a Clemson Rockland town truck went down. She complained that her entranceway was lower than the level of the street. The guy came down, measured, and drew up some yellow lines, and he repaired the situation. I've been waiting to have my situation taken care of for the past four and a half months. As Mr. Leonard told you, the work would start this month. There was an individual that was satisfied. They came out satisfied with all, in all of this. I'm not talking about Jean-Marc, but Mr. Lampere satisfied my or answered my queries. But the other people I dealt with at the town of Clarence and Rockland, nobody else took care of this uh, situation. But Mr. Cormier is playing catch up right now. But make sure, uh, rest assured that we'll start up work here today. And thank you, Councillor Lalonde. Thank you, Councillor Zant. Do you want your fo pictures back, by the way, sir? Do you want your pictures back, pictures you've taken? Well, that's fine. Okay. Fine. All right. Let's keep those pictures on file. Fine, then. Are there any individuals that wish to address council? Your name and address, please. Your name and address. Bonjour. Your name and address. Uh, uh, my name is Rene Faubert. Rene Faubert. I, I live on 2349 Road. Clark Road. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, gentlemen, ladies. Uh, I won't tie uh, you up. I'm sure you're aware of the road problems we have on Clark Road and the ditches. Everything that they said, we have the exact same problem, so I'm not even going to go there. Um, I know it takes time. We're aware that on our street it takes money. So we're, we're like everybody else, we'll wait. The only thing I'm really concerned with is we have ditches. There's four of us, and there's a ditch on each side of the road, and the water is not going anywhere. It's constantly staying and rising. It's actually getting wider. It can't go anywhere because it's getting so deep, it just goes deeper. The ground where the ditch goes, has to go out is higher now, so the water can't go up. And there's trees like this in the ditch. Is there any way you can just, even if it's, if that's the only thing you fix this year, we would be happy with that. Mr. Leonard, can we check on that? On Clark Road? Well, it's, it's, it's a report that's Okay. I, I think there's that one situation, let's say. I know the re it's in the report for what, the PNR? Is it in this? Uh, Oh, no, sorry, sorry, the regular, sorry. Regular? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What, what's your address? 2349 Clark. So and I've, ha I've had the city out there twice to look at it. Oh, so they've already went? And yes, and I've, I've talked to one of the gentlemen about it. He agreed, yes, I see there is a problem there. And I don't think that, and 
I was there on Friday to look at the uh, road. There's 28 houses on the road, and they uh, spread the uh, cal liquid uh, calcium on the road. And on top, I agree with you, the water stays on it. The, uh, there's no ditches. That's nearly to the end, though. And, and we would be happy for now if you could just, on both sides of the road, just where the four houses are, if we can get the water to move down, we would be happy there. We can put up with the rest for now because that's the way it is, right? Yep. We'd really appreciate it if you could help us out because we are before council this evening. Okay. Yeah, be, Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Okay. Can, can we deal with this before the project gets started? Is that, is that what we agree on? And no. now we, 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 we wait for the report. So if this waits until September or October to be done, he's still going to be stuck. It's, a, the it's in the regular. It's not even yet. I know, but between the time we vote, Mr. Mayor, and the time that he gets the survey, I just want to know the time, especially going to have to. Is there less water there? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, it's not something that we could address on one property. It's, it's the entire length of the road that needs to have uh, yeah. ditches. So you can't do anything to remove the water that's in one week before you start the work? You're just going to lower the ditch, and the water's going to stay there because you need to excavate the length of the road, and then and they have to provide outlets, and that's, that's the report that's uh, to consider. The ditch basically just starts at our place. Um, it doesn't go up the hill, so it's staying right there. And it just it, doesn't, it won't go anywhere. And because we have the bush behind us, it's coming in between the two houses and flows into your ditch. That's our problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Thank you then. Service contract also. Yes, that's the next item. We discussed this uh, at length previous uh, to this. Consent items. Any items you would like to remove? 10.3 sub F, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to remove this from our list of consent items so that we may enter into a discussion dealing with a particular aspect of that issue. Any other things? Fine. Councillor Laval, would you care to read the consent items that need to be approved? Yes, certainly, Mr. Mayor. I if you want me to, I will. I know you're good at that. Yes. Go ahead, sir. Be resolved that the following items as listed under consent items appearing on the regular meeting of Town Council agenda of June the 18th, 2018 be adopted. 10.1. Adoption of the minutes of the following meetings. Regular meeting of June the 4th, 2018 and Committee of the Whole meeting of June the 4th, 2018. Also receipt of the minutes of the following meetings. Heritage Advisory Committee, January the 23rd, 2018. Heritage Advisory Committee, April the 3rd, 2018. Planning Committee of April the 5th, 2018. Planning Committee meeting of May the 2nd, 2018. Minutes of the Public Library Board meeting of March the 20th, 2018. Approval of the minutes of the Public Library Board meeting of May the 15th, 2018. Items under 10.3, the following recommendations from Committee of the Whole of June the 4th, 2018. Resolution to approve the purchase and installation of a level two charging station for City Hall and a resolution to approve the evaluation process for heritage sign requests. Item C, resolution to approve the engineering guidelines. Item D, resolutions to acknowledge receipt of the site plan control area bylaw and site plan process guide. Item E, resolution to approve that a professional engineer's report be completed to provide the necessary steps to remove the lead paint from the Jean-Marc Lalonde arena. Oh, I'm sorry. 10.4, adoption of the salaries paid from May the 6th, 2018 to June the 2nd, 2018 in the gross amount of $991,196.59 and net amount of $725,278.31. Seconded by Councillor Zant. All those in favor? There's one item that I would have liked that we remove from the list, item 10.3. You can still remove it So for discussion. I also had another item, Mr. Mayor. Well, as far uh, as long as we're into uh, reviewing items. Well, all those in favor of what has been read, 
save and accept sub A and sub F. Councillor Grimaud, go ahead. You're the first one to have sought that we review this. Whereas council has retained consultants to determine whether savings can be uh, realized by making use of our resources and whereas capital expenditure programs making use of criteria to hire uh, external consultants be resolved that we appoint consultants to review capital expenditure projects that have been approved as well as studies therein. Councillor Zant. Well, the question that I do have uh, deals with what the, the contents of page four that states that we should come up with RFPs. The report has been drawn up in English. But my question is directed to a standing offer agreement. That gives us an idea of where we stand, but it doesn't give us an idea as to when it will be done and what needs to be done when we're dealing with standing offers. offers. We're dealing with four companies that are quite strong in different areas, but they would not have to resort to council approval to implement, uh, to take a decision. What, Mr. Leonard? Well, the new mechanism is already in place to deal with standing offers. At present, we're dealing with four different categories. What we're suggesting is to increase service categories concerning standing offers because things are quite limited as things stand right now, and potentially reviewing the amount has been pre-approved, the $50,000 amount to increase it so that, as you mentioned, we would have to come back to council each and every time we need to do this. Well, when will different disciplines be added onto the list? So I just want to avoid this being dealt with by council on a regular basis, and this in turn, of course, will accelerate ongoing work. project that is uh, that would be done in phases. So uh, one section is less than 50,000, but the whole project as a whole is more than 50,000. What do you do then? If you, if you go uh, on a tender, go on tender, uh, by section, you do, do you go with the 50,000 or do you look at the whole uh, Mr. The Bear, of the uh, when we're purchasing, we look at every contract individually. So it's if the contract itself is uh, under 50000 or over 50000 Okay. So it's because even though it's one project with the same treasury, if you do it in phases, it would be that if it's 50000 in phase one, then it would apply. All right, then. Councillor Levert, resolution to approve a professional engineer's report to be completed to implement the necessary steps to remove the lead paint at the Jean McLennan arena. Hold on a minute. Uh, can we not move and second at all three be adopted? Together? Well, no, we have to do it separately. So moved by Councillor Guedimar, seconded by Councillor Lalonde. All those in favor? Carry then. Continue on, Councillor Levin. We need someone to second this particular resolution. Oh, come on now. You're bogging us down. No, he was going to ask a question. I read it. I've already read the resolution. You need this resolution to be seconded. Well, there you go. Mr. Gribaud has just seconded your resolution. Continue on, Councillor Levin. Well, I don't know why we need to resort to engineering's report each and every time. Uh, I googled steps to be taken to remove lead paint. Steps are outlined quite clearly on the internet. If I have a problem in my own building, I can call up a company and they take a look at the situation. We don't need engineer's report to deal with this. This is not the first time that people have removed lead paint from a given building. Why do we have to spend money on engineer's report? We're being told that things drag on concerning Jean-Marc Lalonde, the Jean-Marc Lalonde arena. And I'm wondering why we need a report again. Mr. Jumeir, do you have an answer to that? Well, Mr. Mayor, of course, this is a Governor of Ontario issue. We're dealing with hazardous waste here, so we need to follow specific steps, When we're, especially when we're dealing with people in the commercial world. Of course, we have to follow certain guidelines, you know. And when we're dealing with, with matters that 
impact directly to the commercial area. We have to take a s close look at health and safety issues, a more ju judicious and extensive look. So we have to adhere to all steps that are prescribed. Just to reassure, reassure minis, members of council, we called upon Ministry of Health employees to consult with us so that we can come up to solutions that might circumvent the need of resorting to engineers. But we still have to proceed with uh, the steps already laid out before us to correct the situation. If I take, uh, for example, uh, either a residential or commercial situation, and if within a few hours, uh, let's say, uh, let's take an oil spill as an example, that within a few hours, professionals show up to take care of the situation. Why do we need engineers when we have specialized companies that deal with oil-related problems, paint-related problems, you know? Well, with regards to designated substances, of course, the company people will show up, but the companies need to resort to an engineer's services. Uh, and the company will invoice its services taking this into account. I believe, oh, I, I see. Councillor Zant, uh, the employees will not be doing the work, but a company that has been hired to do this work, that's right. So this company knows how to remove lead point, of course, because they're ex it's an expert, this company, in removing lead paint. If a, an engineer is hired, he'll be just standing there taking a look at the work being done. We did this at the federal government level. We hired a firm, and then we hired another firm to supervise the firm that was designated to do perform the initial work. You know, we're What's happening right now is that there are people making use of the Jamaic Lalonde arena at the very time that we're uh, right here and now, and we have to perform specific work to ensure that people are working in a safe and healthy environment. We have to ensure that companies do the work within the standards that are prescribed. And if situation arises in the future where somebody becomes ill because of offshoots of the work has been performed, we, we have to protect ourselves. This is what happens. But these companies are certified. I know. But as Mr. Jubinville has stated, you'll have to pay an engineer services one way or another. Either you're going to pay through an invoicing system, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Levat, we have to follow procedures. Well, uh, the engineer's plan that we're alluding to, is that the engineer uh, stemming from the same company that hires uh, the uh, people that will remove the lead paint? Councilor, or oh, Mr. Jumeville, will the workers that will be removing the lead paint working with in the same company uh, that, or working at the same company that the engineer comes from? Well, when we're dealing, let's say, with a construction uh, project, we have to hire supervisors to ensure that work has been properly done. Of course, if we leave this in a company's hands, for example, that has been hired to remove that point, they will hire their own engineering consultant. You see what I mean? So we have to be neutral. So this is a way to ensure that the supervisory work done is done free and clear of any conflicts of interest. That's right. Councillor Lallon, we were dealing with a consultant firm that was attached to this matter. I was, I was going to obtain paint samples and forward them to the National, Resource Council, uh, National Research Council, they would determine whether or not the lead content goes over and beyond the standards prescribed. Councillor, or oh, Mr. Jumeve, should I say, we've already done this. Uh, and the result of the lead analysis does now appear in the report. Well, the consultant firm came up with a 0 0.05 content. Well, the rate varies. It it's, it is calculated in proportion to a parts per million ratio. 
So they'll be s supervising the work also. Yes, technically again, we think we we have come up with a situation that will not prevent us from removing the lead point, but come a, uh, coming up at least with a temporary stopgap measure before the situation has been normalized. So we've come up with the implement implementation of a temporary situation. But if I don't have a recommendation, a positive recommendation from the ministry, well, why don't we perform the work on a permanent s basis right now? Well, hopefully we'll, uh, we can perform the work that's needed uh, tapping into our existing resources within town council, uh, w within the municipality of Clarence and Rockland. All those in favor then? Carried. Let's go on now to sub A resolution to approve the purchase and installation of a level two charging station for City Hall. Yes, Mr. Mayor, be it resolved that Town Council approve the purchase and installation of a charging station, a level two charging station in two locations as approved by the Infrastructure and Land Planning Department and be it also resolved that Council authorizes the transfer of $2,700 from the Building Reserve Fund uh, for 2018 operations so that we can pay for the cost of the purchase and installation of one charging station for vehicles. We initially stated two charging stations and now we're stating one. Well, we're referring to a level two charging station. We're talking about the purchase of one charging station, level two. Well, a level two charging station to be located in two areas. We haven't determined what specific locations we'll be dealing with here. Well, we were talking about the church and another location. Mr. Jubeville, should we leave this in your able hands? Well, Mr. Mayor, we talked about a location close by the church on Laurier Street. The church, of course, is a, uh, certainly a, a promising venue. Mr. Mayor, we discussed this the last time around. I was asked to take a look at the church area. I consulted with the church authorities. They're ready to have a charging station be installed there. Well, this is not what Mr. Leonard has stated. Well, I think we'll have town administration take care of this, right? Well, Mr. Mayor, the fact remains that location uh, certainly met our requirements. Councilor Lalonde met with the church authorities to make sure that everything was okay with them, but we have to also perform the necessary inspections to clear the way so that charging stations can be properly installed there. I'd like to make a comment on this. Uh, one charging sta station will cost us $2,700. If we're talking about two charging stations, we're talking about a $5,400. Are we talking about pre-approving two particular locations? No, really. We're talking about approving one location. There is already one charging station. This would be a second charging station added. So be it resolved that council approves the purchase installation of one charging station. The resolution states two charging stations. No, we're talking about one level two charging station at two different locations. No, we're talking about one particular location. So we're talking about two charging stations being installed. Look, look, folks. Uh, the resolution states, what does the resolution state? Really? We're talking about two charging stations. Uh, Mr. Leonard, could you please clarify the situation? We're talking about one charging station at one location to be installed. So we'll have to change the resolution as it reads from two to one location. So we'll have, yes, that's fine. I believe that one car can be charged at this charging station. Mrs. Wedet, will you please modify the resolution? Thank you. All those in favor, carry then. Well, thank you. Committee's reports, accounts paid. Councillor Grimard. Yes, of course. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.
Let me just read the following. Be it resolved that the accounts pay from the period 12th of May to the 8th of June in the amount of $1,421,262.34 be adopted as recommended. Seconded by Councillor Zant. Any questions? All those in favor? Carried, then. Thank you. 11.2, extend service contract for Dave Darch. That was discussed. We, But you do have uh, resolutions to be adopted, however. Uh, we have the recommendation, and there is something that was added on. Uh, yes, the weekly stipend to be paid. Councillor Zant, do you want me to read the first uh, re resolution and then go on to the second one? Well, no. Let's deal with the initial recommendation. Yes, fine. Whereas Mr. Dave Darch's engineering expertise is still required by the municipality, be it resolved that his contract be extended for two days a week until the end of November 30th, 2018. Fine. Seconded by Councillor Joignard. Any questions? All those in favor? Carried then. Amendment to the dog bylaw. Councillor Laval. Yes, hold on, Mr. Mayor. Let me come up with it. Uh, go ahead. Well, go ahead, Councilor Joignard. Resolve that Council consider the adoption of an amendment to the current dog bylaw at its next regular meeting in order to allow three dogs per household plus any service dog that may be clinically assigned to a person living in that household and to allow five service dogs in training and further allowing rescue center to have up to 20 dogs in its care as the dogs transition to new homes. Seconded by Councillor Zant. Questions? Councillor Berlinguet. I believe that's exactly the same resolution that we tackled at the previous meeting. Nothing has changed. Mr. Wa no, nothing has changed as things stand. Look, the bylaw is not perfect by any means, but certainly it would compel people that don't follow the standards set out to at least comply. I'm expecting that by uh, the fall I'll come up with a new bylaw whereby the new bylaw addresses specific sections dealing with people that train Yesku dogs to follow certain standards. I'm dealing with a particular case at present. So uh, I'm trying to get these people involved to respect, uh, to adhere to standards issued by the government. It's just a matter of adding something that will impact people that train rescue dogs and uh, regulate training centers also. Well, this is an amendment to the bylaw. We already have an existing bylaw. If we are to modify the existing bylaw as requested last time around, well, we need a bit more clarification uh, concerning definitions contained, contained in the bylaw. What do we need clarifications? Well, the proper definition of what we understand by what a residence is and what space is allocated to individual dogs. Well, I spoke to Mr. Dwayne because I'm dealing with this department. Uh, what I'm trying to do is to have people follow regulations that are set out. They have to properly research the matter. They, we could come up with something quite quickly, but we have to take a look at things in depth. Given the bylaw that we would implement tonight, it would not, well, it would actually offer coverage to those people that are dealing with this right now to deter, you know, uh, to uh, come up with proper definitions, uh, proper definitions as to the size that can be adopted by a kennel or that can uh, that can impact a kennel and where a kennel can be located, whether in an urban or in a rural environment. We need to uh, modify the uh, bylaw, but it requires of us that we perform uh, the necessary research. One thing stands for sure is that if people circumvent uh, 
the bylaw, it means that, well, you know, if a lot of people circumvent the bylaw, then it does mean that the bylaw does not correspond to the reality as it stands right now. My sole concern is that when we're going to implement the changes, will these people impacted by the changes, will these people stand ready to implement the said changes imposed upon them? If we reduce the number of service dogs, it might give rise to a certain number of problems unless we allow them some time to ad uh, adapt themselves. If there are many people that don't meet the regulations set out, uh, I think it would allow us to allow them time to adapt. Councillor Zant, I'm in agreement with what my colleagues state here, but I'd like to know what the timeline is. I don't want to point the finger because I know that everybody is kept busy by other matters, but we've been waiting, let's say, for the past year to implement a new parking bylaw. We still haven't gotten it yet, but Mr. Bell. Oui. Ça, 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 ça
Est-ce que ça serait possible, quand vous intégrez des, euh, des informations de d'autres règlements, que vous mettiez en parenthèse d'où vient cette... Euh, mm -hmm. pour faire le lien, pour que s'ils veulent avoir plus de détails, ils peuvent euh, aller voir ce règlement-là? Oui, ouais, probablement, oui. Il y aurait une manière de le mettre un peu plus user-friendly. Oui, c'est ça. Il y a un lien qui va aller voir certains ça. autres règlements, d'où ce que c'est écrit. Mm -hmm. Puis au pire, aller même... Ça. Au pire, allez, si c'est possible, pas possible de faire un lien, au moins l'avoir quand même décrit. Que tu pourrais le mentir oui, par toi-même, tu pourrais aller faire la recherche. Ça. Tu pourrais pas un problème avec okay. ça. Puis aussi pour nous autres, on sait quand on a à prendre des décisions, on sait combien ça affecte combien de règlements. OK. Parfait. Okay. Si, si, si je demande dans le texte de l'évolution du règlement, de la on peut rajouter parce que c'est une définition qui n'existe pas dans le règlement actuel. Une définition, c'est un sens de sauvetage. Et doit être. La définition, c'est que ça doit être certifié dans une zone euh, rurale. Est-ce est qu'on peut rajouter ça? C'est juste la définition. Est-ce qu'on va permettre jusqu'à 20 pieds dans ces places-là? Faire les clairs, définir, c'est ça. Est-ce qu'on peut les rajouter? Oui, mais mais, mais quelqu'un ne peut, peut pas déterminer par lui-même, OK, j'ouvre un centre de... Ma maison est rendue un centre de... C'est <rire> ça, ils ont mis ça. Mais nous, on n'a pas dans nos règlements. Ce que mais, je veux dire, il pas là. tu dis qu'ils n'ont pas le droit à cause d'une loi provinciale, mais, mais le règlement de ville n'adresse pas. Oui, mais on peut les arrêter quand même, M. Roy, vous nous dire. Oui, parce que c'est seulement les centres qui ont le droit de faire ça. Puis s'ils ne peuvent pas prouver qu'ils n'ont pas les papiers officiels, ouais. comme quoi qu'ils sont non, reconnus comme un centre. Il y a dans le règlement, c'est pour ça qu'on ne donne pas celle-là. Oui, mais s'il si fait dans la, dans la mise à jour, ce n'est pas urgent d'avoir la définition, à mon avis. Il doit être dans une zone désignée. Ben oui, il faut que ça soit dans une zone Je suis absolument d'accord. Juste en disant que c'est dans une zone désignée, fait que ce serait juste besoin d'ajouter ça dans le prochain. C'est ben, comme une section d'entraîneurs de, désignés. J'aimerais rajouter une, une, une définition pour ça que si peu importe, ça serait qu'il y aurait besoin de venir avec. moins d'appels sur vous pour avoir toute l'information de ce que je dois amener, de ce que je dois faire, c'est quoi les Exactement. Fait que c'est essayer d'avoir le plus de contrôle possible à l'interne, qu'est-ce qu'on veut faire avec ces restrictions-là, mais ça, ça va être euh, un « working progress ».« Working progress ». Avec cette résolution-là, ça te donne la munition pour mettre ça en place. Exactement. Moi, je propose, M. Mike, que ça soit établi afin de permettre à notre bureau de de rajouter... Euh, ben oui, mais il va prendre six, six, six mois pour arranger toutes les choses. Comme c'est là, ça, ça lui donne la munition pour mettre toute question en règle. Mais avec ça, une personne pourrait demain arriver pour prendre 20 chiens. Non, non, non. Non, 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 non M. Lalon, le problème, c'est qu'à l'heure actuelle, là, si on n'adapte pas ça pour rendre ce qui se fait illégal, il va falloir que les autres aillent donner plein d'amendes à plein de monde parce qu'il y en a beaucoup qui ne rencontrent pas les critères. Parce que là, au moins, ils vont rencontrer les critères. Puis après ça, ça lui donne le temps d'organiser vraiment le règlement pour qu'il soit vraiment adapté, à jour, avec c'est quoi les besoins, c'est quoi les, comment les, les autres règlements en place affectent le règlement qu'on qu a besoin dans la municipalité. Donc ça, si on passe ça par ça, euh, une personne ne peut pas arriver du quartier non. qui a non. Un non. Non. Il a besoin de faire ça. C'est lui qui décide de la ça. Il a ouais. toute la munition qu'il a besoin de Je comprends ça, le point de M. L'interprétation de ça, là. il y a des gens qui ont dit « Hey, ça doit être ambigu, la, la semaine passée, le, le conseil a passé le règlement, on peut avoir jusqu'à 20 chiens maintenant. » On va chercher un dernier maintenant. Oui, mais non, mais il y en a qui… Je, moi, je connais du monde ouais. qui, qui, qui ont décidé de, de la sauver des animaux. Ouais, ils ont commencé ça à faire ça dans leurs appartements. Ils n'ont pas de licence. Ils n'ont pas de licence. Ça va être une flèche. Là, on vient juste de fixer une limite. Fait que vous dites « Hey, je peux… » Moi, je veux pas les faire mal. Il faut faire qu'on mette. Je comprends pour on, les, on les chiens, je comprends pour les chiens de, de, de Dubou, mettre les limites à 30, là, bon, euh, les, les faire augmenter. Avec ça, il y a la munition pour le mettre à 30. Mais, mais 20 chiens, je ne comprends pas pour faire Oui, mais la, la, la personne que vous dites qui n'est pas légale, ils peuvent intervenir, eux autres, là, avec ça. Hein? Je demande un vote. Qui est en faveur? Merci. Parce que ça, je parle. 11.4.
sont nécessaires afin de compléter les conditions d'approbation de l'ébauche d'un plan d'avertissement approuvé par le conseil municipal le 4 avril 2018 pour le développement du stage 5 du village Maurice, qu'il soit résolu que le conseil municipal adopte le règlement 2018, tout bon? Oui. oui. Okay. Okay. Adopte le règlement 2018-83, amendement numéro 10 au plan officiel de l'aire urbaine de la cité de Clarence Rockland afin de changer la désignation de résidentiel à faible densité à résidentiel à moyenne densité et commerce des services pour certaines parties du terrain décrit comme étant une partie du lot 26-27 concession, concession 1 OS, partie du lot 25 concession 2 OS et partie du lot CV concession 8 afin d'ajouter la politique 5.6.3.6 telle que recommandée par le département d'infrastructure et aménagement du territoire et qu'il soit résolu que le conseil municipal adopte le règlement 2018-82 modifiant le règlement de zonage 2016-10 afin de changer la catégorie de zonage de zone résidentielle urbaine de densité 1 générale aménagement différé R1H à zone résidentielle urbaine de densité 1 spéciale exemption 2 R1S-2, zone résidentielle urbaine de densité 3 exception 11 R3-11, zone résidentielle urbaine de densité 3 exception 14 R3-14, zone commerciale générale exception 8 CG-8, et zones de parc et espaces verts OS pour le terrain décrit comme étant une partie des lots 26 et 27 concession 1 OS, partie du lot 25 concession 2 OS et partie des lots CD concession 8, tel que recommandé par le département d'infrastructure et aménagement du territoire.
et attendu qu'une entente entre toutes les parties a été conclue et un nouveau règlement de zonage devra être adopté, ainsi que l'ajout de deux nouvelles conditions à l'ébauche de plan de lotissement. Qu'il soit résolu que le conseil municipal approuve l'ajout de deux conditions stipulées à la section 5 au rapport aménagement 1853R pour l'ébauche du plan de lotissement soumis par Arkell Engineering pour 3223701 Canada Inc. Brigil, dossier numéro 2-12-121, et qu'il soit résolu que le Conseil adopte le règlement numéro 2018-80 concernant un amendement au règlement de zonage 2016-10 dans le but de modifier la catégorie de zonage de la propriété de zone résidentielle urbaine de densité 1, aménagement différé à 1H, à zone résidentielle urbaine de densité 3, exception 21, aménagement différé R3, 21H, tel que recommandé par le département d'infrastructure et aménagement du territoire, et qu'il soit résolu qu'il n'y aura aucune période d'appel. Alors, M. Jean, question? Tout le monde n'a pas peur? Très bonne résolution. Mm -hmm. 11.6. Madame, achat des camions, c'est pour le prochain tour. Que le conseil municipal adopte le règlement 2018-93 afin d'autoriser le maire et la greffière à octroyer un contrat, un contrat à Rotten Ford Sales Limited pour l'achat d'un camion une tonne avec DEN pour la somme de 54 317$, excluant la TVH. Demandez, Monsieur Jean, question? Euh, Est-ce que c'est le montant qui avait été pris dans le budget? Soit résolu que le conseil municipal adapte le règlement municipal 2018-74 de fait un règlement pour autoriser le maire de la Grafière à créer un contrat avec équipement lourd patrimoine incorporé pour l'achat d'un camion 4x4 à issue peinte avec charru et sablière pour la somme de 272 784 et 92 excluant la TVH. Secondé, M. Grimard, question. Il soit résolu que le conseil municipal approuve que les services communautaires mettent sur pied et en application un plan de partenariat avec des entreprises et des groupes communautaires afin d'amasser des fonds pour le développement du parc du village Maurice, tel que recommandé. Secondé, Jean, question. Tout le monde en faveur? Merci. Réhabilitation de la structure du côté chemin de fleur. M. Bernaguet. Attendu que l'état de la structure du chemin de fleur s'est détourné davantage en raison de la saturation permanente de la base de la rue et qu'un drainage adéquat ça peut dire en anglais, monsieur Arme de Whereas Clark Road Structural Commission has further deteriorated due to the permanent saturation of the subgrade and that proper drainage with suitable outlets are required along Clark Road to address the drainage and structural issues. Whereas the 2018 budget deliberations did not allocate funding for the construction of phase E of Clark Road. Whereas the project objectives of Clark Road aligned with the DIP drainage study by Council approved $200,000 to complete phase three of the Clark Road project, where $125,000 to be transferred from the DIP drainage study project and $75,000 from the federal gas tax. Second, 
Question Tout le monde en faveur Merci. Waste treatment of plant. I think we got this tonight. Merci, Julien. Quel soit résolu que le règlement 2018 tire. En anglais, ok. Be it resolved that the bylaw number 2018-1816, a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to award a contract to the Ontario Clean Waters and Secrets of Life Project Management and Design Review Services associated with waste treatment plant upgrades be adopted. And be it resolved that bylaw number 2018-107, being a bylaw to authorize the mayor and the clerk to sign the requirement documents in order to amend the scope of the contract with R.D. Anderson Engineering from the current upset limit of $525,000 to an upset limit of $948,000 for the work associated with the sewage treatment facility be adopted. C'est exactement le même rapport qui a été présenté euh, en avril. Euh, là, c'est juste parce qu'on avait besoin d'amender le contrat avec euh, notre euh, firme euh, de légale. Euh, donc, on a, ce qu'on attendait, ça a été fait. Donc, c'est pour ça que c'est… Euh, c'est quoi approuvé dans le budget? C'est tout approuvé selon le budget en 2018. Là, on, avait, on avait fait approuver ce montant-là. Là, c'est juste qu'on on fait le, le contrat. Okay. 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 Un point, M. le maire. Combien de temps que ça va prendre avant qu'on puisse procéder à la construction de ce euh, grillage-là? Cette construction-là a été prévue pour euh, 2020. Donc, euh, c est, c est, on a un an là, de, de finir les plans, les devis, toutes ces choses-là. De toute façon, on va, on va en être au courant. Euh, Cette semaine dernière, j'ai pris la rue Coron de Laurier. C'était <coughs> épouvantable la senteur qu'il y avait. Puis je me demande, les gens qui demeure juste à l'est de l'aréna qui arrive, là, les plans qu'on va avoir, parce que là, c'est épouvantable ça arrive tout ça. Oui, c'est pour ça que c'est fou que ça presse. On est prêt pour Chapman, mais plutôt que je sors dehors, ça prend la bande. Ah, OK. Ça se roule à quand même. Ça, on s'en finit, les gars. On s'en fout de quelque chose. C'est pas ça, c'est tout. Voilà. Tout le monde en faveur? Merci. Règlement municipaux. Est-ce qu'il y en a que vous voulez sortir parce qu'on n'a pas beaucoup de temps pour parler de ça? Non, ok, parfait. Est-ce qu'il y en a que vous voulez sortir? Ben, je ne voudrais pas le sortir, mais j'aimerais apporter un point sur euh, un item. Oui, oui, oui. Ça, ben, oui. Tu le sors rapidement? Oui. Je ne suis pas contre cette idée-là. Oui, 12 points quoi? Ok, 12 points de vitesse. Oui. Lalonde, vous avez été tranquille ah, cette année. Non, non, moi je vais en sortir un aussi. Ah, on y va. On peut sortir à n'importe laquelle des, des délais principaux, donc on peut prendre 12.4. C'est la même question qui s'applique à toute la gang. Donc. OK. Oui, on y va aussi, Madame Claire. Soit résolu que les règlements municipaux suivants euh, soient adoptés. 12.1-2018-67 pour amender le règlement sur les antennes. 12.2-2018-68 pour amender pour amender le règlement de zonage 2305 rue Raymond. 1203-2018-79 euh, pour amender le règlement de zonage 1188 chemin du lac. 12.5-2018-85 pour cours d'eau municipal Hammond Maintenance. 12.6-2018-86 cours d'eau municipal Avinet. 12.7-2018-86. Non, c'est 12.7, 2018-87, cours d'eau municipale, Lucière, maintenance. 12.8, 2018-88, cours d'eau municipale, Lepage. 12.9, 2018-99, cours d'eau municipale, Lucière. 12.10, 2018-90, cours d'eau municipale, Paul Séguin, Maine. 12.11, 2018-91, 
pour Dôme Municipal, pas de vin. 12.12, 2018-92, pour Dôme Municipal, Rosan Séguin F. 12.13, 2018-93, pour Dôme Municipal. Non. Ça? Non. Non? Ok, c'est beau. Par pardon si euh, c'est le nom exactement. Non, c'est pas ça. Euh, 12.14, 2018-94, pour Dôme Municipal, Louis Lapeur. 12.15, 2018-95, pour d'eau municipale, pharmacie Fire Street. 12.16, 2018-96, pour d'eau municipale, Réginbal. 12.18, 2018-98, règlement pour régulariser la destruction ou dédommage aux arbres. 12.19, 2018-99, pour amender les, ter les termes de référence qui ont été consultés par l'environnement. 12.20, 2018 restant. Signer une entente avec la marche électrique incorporée pour l'achat et installation de génératrices à Rena Fire Street et Garage Municipal. 12.21 2018 restant 1. Pour signer une entente avec Senex Construction Limited pour remplacement d'un ponceau sur le chemin baseline. 12.22 2018 restant 4. Pour approuver un permis additionnel d'un an à l'entente avec Ludwig Busline pour les routes 530 et 535. C'est abordé. M. Levert, tout le monde en faveur? Merci. On retourne, M. 12.4. Euh, 12.4, c'est 2018-84 pour d'eau municipale. Hein? que le, règle, le règlement municipal 12-17 soit adopté. Secondo, M. Balaguette, question. La seule raison que j'ai demandé de la clôturer là, par la discussion, c'est que moi, ça fait plus qu'un an que j'ai demandé des questions concernant amender le règlement de stationnement. Ça a été, je n'ai pas entendu parler. Ça fait aussi un an. On a-tu perdu, M. Roy? Ça aurait pu rentrer avec oui. ça. Oui. Je me rappelle que tu avais appelé le oui. petit règlement. Il est sur le mien comme c'est là. Et puis, euh, j'ai déjà parlé avec M. Roy. Puis, on, on a. Euh, euh, Qu'est-ce qu'on va vous proposer? C'est euh, de mettre en place des guidelines euh, pour que ce soit toujours de la consistance quand c'est au niveau développement au niveau du parking. Que ça prend un petit peu plus de temps, mais euh, ça va arriver avec. Euh, ça va être construit. Je pense que ça aurait pu être inclus avec ça. Non, c'est pas construit. La, la carte est toute la révision de tout, puis on a un nouveau. Euh, ça, c'est surtout parce que c'est. On a un nouveau maire de jeu, donc euh, ça va être ça. C'est ça. Tout le monde en parle. Merci. Je pense qu'on arrive à la fin. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Règlement de confirmation. M. Grimard. Seulement. Thank you. 